sciatica. It is a condition in which the sciatic nerve or one of its roots or branches is compressed, resulting in pain in the lower back and the buttock and sharp shooting pain in the leg, usually in one side. So let us look at the anatomy of the sciatic nerve first. The sciatic nerve arises from the lumbosacral plexus. Sciatic nerve is a huge nerve that comes from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. There are five nerve roots, and each one has its own dermatomal distribution. When a nerve is compressed, it gives pain and symptoms in a specific area. And this is an example when the L5 nerve root is compressed. You can see that the top of the foot is involved in the sensory deficit. However, the most common disc herniation is between L5 and S1, and that will affect S1 nerve root, which is the lateral side of the foot. And if the L4 nerve root is involved, then you can get the medial side of the foot involved. Dermatomes are important in knowing at which level is the herniation of the disc. But for the diagnosis of sciatica, that's really not very important because what matters is the pain in the lower back and the buttock area is shooting down the leg. What is the course of the nerve? It runs from the lumbar spine through the buttock down to the leg and foot. The nerve runs predominantly in the posterior aspect of the buttock and the lower extremity. Symptoms and signs. A sharp shooting pain down the buttock, the thigh and the leg usually on one side of the body, with numbness, tingling, and burning. The area of symptoms and pain usually depend on the nerve that's involved. Sitting can aggravate the pain. It's almost like you're doing a straight leg raising sign. You're tensioning the nerve. You're lengthening the nerve. You're stretching the nerve. That's why you get pain from setting. Also, coughing, sneezing, and moving can aggravate the pain. The pain will improve by standing. The provocative tests. Provocative tests are the following. A straight leg raising. You call it the tension sign for L5 to S1 nerve roots. Sitting or supine will reproduce the pain and parathesia in the leg at 30 to 70 degree of hip flexion. It really helps to identify the best candidate for surgery. If the patient have a tension sign, then the patient will get better with surgery. Then the Lesuk sign, a straight leg raising pain, is aggravated by forced ankle dorsiflexion. What are the causes of sciatica? Usually it is a herniated disc. What is a disc herniation? And what is a disc anyhow? It is an elastic soft cushion between the vertebrae of the spine. It links the vertebrae together. It gives stability to the spine and allows the spine to move. The disc has two parts, a fibrous outer layer called the annulus fibrosus and soft inner layer called nucleus bulbosus. The soft inner material leaks out or herniates through a tear in the fibrous outer layer and that becomes a disc herniation. So a tear of the disc may allow the gel-like material in the center of the disc to protrude, 
causing a herniation of the disc which presses into the nerve root as it exits the spine. This irritates the close by nerve root. Sciatica is one of the most common symptoms of lumbar disc herniation. Treatment, rest, and conservative treatment with anti-inflammatory medication, muscle relaxant, physiotherapy, usually the condition resolves itself in a few weeks. Surgery is done if the pain does not improve after six weeks of initiation of conservative treatment. Surgery is usually done to remove the disc and relieve the nerve from the pressure. Good outcome from surgery. If the patient will have leg pain, have a positive straight leg raising sign, if the patient have neurological deficit, and the clinical finding correspond with the MRI findings. Surgery is usually called discectomy or laminotomy. Piriformis syndrome can also cause sciatica-like symptoms, and it needs to be differentiated from sciatica that's caused by a disc problems. Both could have the same symptoms, but have different causes. Diagnosis of piriformis syndrome should be done by exclusion of the spine problems that compresses on the spinal nerve root and causes true sciatica. So if you have a patient and the patient complain of sciatica and the MRI does not show the patient have a herniated disc, then the patient probably has piriformis syndrome. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I was helpful.